വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ സെഷൻസ് എ ഫോർട്ടി വൺ ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് മെയിൽ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ടു ദി ഇയർ വിത്ത് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ഓഫ് മയാൽജി ആൻഡ് വീക്ക്നെസ് ഓഫ് ബോത്ത് അപ്പർ ലിംസ് ആൻഡ് ലോവർ ലിംസ് സിൻസ് എർലി മോർണിംഗ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ഇനീഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ഒബെയിങ് കമാൻഡ്സ് കമ്മിങ് ടു എയർ വേ എയർ വേ വാസ് പേറ്റൻറ്റ് നോ പൂളിംഗ് ഓഫ് സെക്രീഷൻസ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ബ്രീത്തിങ് എയർ ആൻഡ്രി ബയോലാറ്ററി ഈക്വൽ റെസ്പിറ്റ് റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് എയ്റ്റീൻ പെർ മിനിറ്റ് സാച്ചുറേഷൻ ഓഫ് നയൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇൻ റൂമ കമ്മിങ് ടു സർക്കുലേഷൻ ബി പി ഓഫ് വൺ തേർട്ടി ബാർ നയൻറ്റി മില്ലിമീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മെർക്കുറി പൾസ് റേറ്റ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി എയ്റ്റ് പെർ മിനിറ്റ് ഓൾ പെർഫെറൽ പൾസസ് ഈക്വലി പാൽപ്പബിൾ കമ്മിങ് ടു ഡിസബിലിറ്റി ജി സി എസ് ഓഫ് ഇ ഫോർ വി ഫൈവ് എം സിക്സ് പ്യൂപ്പിൾ ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് എം എം ബയോട്ടി ഈക്വലി റിയാക്ടിംഗ് ടു ലൈറ്റ് എക്സ്പോഷർ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ഓഫ് നയൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് പോയിൻറ്റ് സിക്സ് ഡിഗ്രി ഫാരൻ ഹീറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ജി ആർ ബി എസ് ഓഫ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ മില്ലിഗ്രാം പെർ ഡെസിലിറ്റർ കമ്മിങ് ടു അഡ്ജൻസ് ഓഫ് പ്രൈമറി സർവേ വി ഹാവ് ടേക്കൺ എ വി ബി ജി ഷോയിങ് പി എച്ച് ഓഫ് സെവൻ പോയിൻറ്റ് ത്രീ വൺ പി സി ഒ ടു ഓഫ് തേർട്ടി ഫോർ ബൈക്കാർബ് ഓഫ് സെവൻറ്റീൻ പൊട്ടാസ്യം ഓഫ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് സെവൻ സോഡിയം വൺ തേർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് ക്ലോറൈഡ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ആനോൺ ഗ്യാപ്പ് ഓഫ് സെവൻ സജസ്റ്റിംഗ് എ നോർമൽ ആനോൺ ഗ്യാപ്പ് മെറ്റബോളിക് അസിഡോസസ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് കോമ്പൻസേറ്റഡ് വി ഹാവ് ഓൾസോ ടേക്കൺ ആൻ ഇ സി ജി വാട്ട് ഇ തിങ്ക് ദ റീസൺ ഫോർ ദിസ് നഗ്മ സർ നോർമൽ ആൻഡ് ഗ്യാപ്പ് മെറ്റബോളിക് അസിഡോസസ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഇത് ഡ്യൂ ടു ബൈ കാർണൈഡ് ലോസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ജി ഐ ഓർ ഡ്യൂ ടു റീനൽ ട്യൂബുലർ അസിഡോസസ് ഓക്കെ or uh, GI losses like diarrhea, urethrocytic hemodystomy and renal tubular acidosis is the most common. Is H- there anything you are suspecting in this patient like uh, that? Uh, renal tubular acidosis sir, since potassium is of 1.7. So that is the only thing we can suspect here. Okay. We have taken an ECG uh, showing a normal sinus rhythm with a QTC of 520, ST dis- uh, depression all leads and absent T wave with U waves prominent in V2 and V3. Okay. at this point of time we have put an ejv and we have started 40 ml equal importance of this qtc prolongation qtc short all these things in emergency room or icu uh, chance of arrhythmia sir predictive so, how many patients you are seeing uh, qtc prolonged or qtc low they are not developing any arrhythmia what is your role there identifying the factor that is identify anybody anybody will identify the ecg technician will identify it is not your role specify your role in a patient who is having prolonged qt or short qt it is your role you have to avoid so many drugs when there is qtc prolongation some drugs in qtc shorten because these drugs can create problem in patient they can develop arrhythmias like especially ventricular, yes. ventricular tachycardia like that so our role is to avoid right. such drugs in these conditions okay qtc prolongation alone uh, like will not produce any problem to the patient but when we are giving drugs which can further prolong the qtc or which can produce uh, uh, like vt in that patient or uh, tosadis d points in these patients they are very important so you avoid such drugs in that patient okay at this point of time we have also taken a urine spot potassium and ejv was inserted and uh, potassium correction was also started sir what is a urine potassium 9.17 okay. so that means uh, hypokalemia is there there is no urinary loss of potassium at that point of time okay. we don't know whether the patient has already lost or not but at that point of time there is no loss what does it uh, tell you that urinary potassium is normal or low normal what does it tell you what diagnostic clue it will give to you translucular shift it is okay. normal so possibly it can be either patient is not taking, taking potassium feeds. or there is a translucular tra- shift of potassium there is no urinary loss of potassium okay if urinary loss of potassium is there acidosis is there hypokalemia is there then diagnosis is different okay since there is no loss then it can be something else okay what will happen in renal tubular acidosis uh, renal tubular acidosis are uh, basically two types are the distal and proximal type 2 is uh, proximal renal tubular acidosis uh, proximal tubule absorption of glucose bicarbonate phosphorus uh, and water takes place when there is renal tubular acidosis uh, the machinery is gone so there will be glycosuria in a non diabetic patient 
uh, one of the most common presentation and decrease phosphorus that uh, produces rickett cell changes and uh, decrease uh, water absorption so indirectly activate the ra system and that causes hypokalemia okay. uh, and uh, urine ph will be less than 5.5 okay. uh, most common cause in uh, children is fanconi syndrome and adults can be myeloma and other drugs like cyclophosphamide topiramate etc whereas renal tubular acidosis type 1 is distal rti uh, where uh, the collecting duct is involved collecting duct is the main area for acidification here not the wall collecting duct but channels like sodium potassium and h plus atps channels are affected so as a result acidification severe acidification takes place and urine acidification won't take place mm. so ph of urine will be more than 5.5 and h plus ions get accumulate so severe uh, acidosis can be there compared to type 2 and severe acidosis again leading to severe hypokalemia is present in uh, type 1 also okay. sir and this acidosis again causes hypercalciuria sir in okay. type 1 sir. so most of the hypokalemic <coughs> cases you have alkalosis okay but in renal tubular acidosis one condition where you should think about acidosis and hypokalemia yes. together okay there are other reasons for hypokalemia and acidosis like uh, you, you have severe diarrhea and uh, acidosis due to dehydration can also present like that but here in the rta one of the rtas you have hypokalemia with acidosis okay all other hypokalemias normally you have alkalosis okay then come to ample history uh, the patient has similar episodes in the past and was admitted and evaluated and potassium corrections were given Uh, no history of any allergies coming to drug history the patient was on syrup port clo the last meal was taken at 9 pm coming to events related to the episodes uh, the 41 year old male known case of previous uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis present to the er with complaints of myalgia and weakness of both upper limb and lower limb since 5 am uh, the patient also gives history of uh, increased carbohydrate intake and is also a construction worker mm -hmm. so increased st2 important reasons of um, acute muscle weakness in hypokalemic periodic paralysis uh, one is carbohydrate rich food mm -hmm. and so also increased sternus exercise okay. two things one is exercise and uh, other one is increased carbohydrate diet both can produce acute weakness of muscle uh, no history of any constipation urination involuntary urination no history of any uh, deviation of angle of mouth Uh, no history of any trauma, no history of any uh, snake bite, etc. Sir, no other associated symptoms, no aggravating or relieving factors. Uh, coming to examination, snake bite, uh, you think because of muscle weakness. Yes, uh, can progress in the later stages. Okay, what will be the clinical feature of snake bite, which is different from uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis? The most striking feature of muscle weakness in snake bite, snake bite. which is which may not be there in hypokalemic periodic paralysis edema lordosis ptosis is a classical feature in snake bite myasthenia gravis and all but that may not be seen in uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis maybe later stages it you may see okay normally these muscle patients have large muscle weakness okay especially proximal muscle weakness high muscles are not generally involved but they may have some difficulty afterwards Coming to general examination, uh, no paralyzed sinuses, clubbing, generalized lymph node pathology, or pedal edema, sir. Uh, systemic examination, CNS power four by five in both upper limbs and lower limb, GCS of fifteen by fifteen, sir. Uh, GIT soft, non tender, bubble sounds were present. Uh, CVS S one S two were present. Chest air and rib bilaterally equal, sir, and clear, sir. Uh, so at this point of time, <coughs> we have sent the urine spot potassium. and we have started the correction sir mm -hmm. i mean, uh, we have initially calculated the uh, we have also sent the magnesium levels sir. what is the total deficit that you have to tell first so, uh, 0.3 uh, corresponds to 100 ml equivalent sir okay. here approximately 2 uh, is there sir so approximately 1500 to so 1500 ml equivalent deficit is deficit. there in this patient <laughs> as per your uh, calculation only thing the, since it is a shift hypokalemia there is a Uh, reverse, reverse shift, shift also can happen while treating the patient or while when the patient is completely bed rest that you have to keep in mind and uh, transfuse whereas other conditions uh, the suppose 1500 is there that 1500 itself you have to transfuse and then uh, we have evaluated the electrolytes came as magnesium was uh, 2.3 sir okay and we have started correction potassium as 80 ml equivalents 
uh, we have put that the uh, put the center line and 80 milli equivalence uh, in 500 ml ns over 5 hours we have started the correction you need a center line for that uh, yes sir you need a center line sir. more than 40 equivalence if you are transducing center line is preferable oh, yes. because uh, if you transduce more amount of potassium through a peripheral line what will happen Phlebitis. Phlebitis can mm -hmm. easily occur. So, that should be avoided. So, initially you can, when the patient is having muscle weakness, you can start through the peripheral line. It is always better to put a center line and continue the infusion. Okay. And then after 6 hours, uh, we have rechecked the potassium. The potassium came out to be 3.5. Okay. That huh. means the uh, transcellular shift, shift is reversed. Okay. Uh, then the weakness also gradually improved sir, okay. after 12 hours. Okay. Uh, after two days, uh, the patient uh, potassium levels became normal. We have stopped, stopped the infusions and we observed the patient and the potassium was maintaining within normal range okay. sir, and we discharged the patient. Okay. Sir. So, what advice you give for this patient? What all advices you should give for this patient? Uh, sir, one is… Uh, Do you know that now the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Hypokalemic periodic, periodic paralysis. It can occur repeatedly. Uh -huh. And family history also may be there, that you have to trace. So, what advice you give to the patient? Uh, to avoid carbohydrate-rich foods, sir. Okay. To avoid means uh, completely avoid? Uh, no, sir. To large quantity, quantity of carbohydrates should be avoided. Be avoided, sir. Okay. And the patient should take more potassium yes, in the sir. diet. Yes. Okay. Suppose the patient takes more potassium, will, it go, will the patient go to hyperkalemia? No, sir. Both are different channel of disease. No, no. Will, it, will the patient go to hyperkalemia or not? Suppose uh, you ask the patient to take a uh, lot of potassium, will the patient go to hyperkalemia? Suppose you take a lot of potassium today, will you go develop hyperkalemia? No. Why? There are energy things. So, energy. if your kidneys are normal, how much ever potassium you take, nothing will happen to your body, Bo kidney will try to remove. If there is a renal failure, then you have to be very careful. Okay. Now, tell something about hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Uh, sir, hypokalemic periodic paralysis, Actually, when we think about hyperkalemia, it is a calcium channel of okay. uh, comes under the uh, periodic paralysis, basically three types, mm -hmm. hypokalemia, four types, hypokalemic, hyperkalemic, Anderson syndrome and thyrotoxic periodic paralysis. Okay. In hypokalemic periodic paralysis, uh, due to genetic defects uh, in the CAC genes mm -hmm. uh, and it is triggered by both hypokalemic periodic paralysis triggered by carbohydrate. Uh, rich food and uh, symptoms subside in potassium intake whereas in hyperkalemic it is triggered by uh, potassium supplementation sir and decreases on uh, on carbo uh, increase on car uh, decrease on carbohydrate rich foods sir. Okay. Uh, then comes thyrotoxic periodic paralysis related to TSH hormone and then Anderson syndrome related to dysarthemias uh, periodic paralysis and uh, congenital anomalies sir. Okay. So, this is only hypokalemic, hypokalemic periodic, periodic paralysis. paralysis. Okay. Only thing, patient should avoid uh, such strenuous exercise and uh, uh, carbohydrate. Okay. In hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, how do you manage? We had last one patient hyperkalemic periodic paralysis because of thyrotoxicosis. How do you manage that? Uh, in thyrotoxicosis causing periodic paralysis, the drug of choice is actually beta blockers. Beta so. blockers. Okay. Beta blockers and? You have to treat the hyperthyroidism yeah. also along with it. How do you manage that hyperkalemia? Hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is hyperkalemia. Okay. Where the kidneys are e even normal, patient develops suddenly hyperkalemia, patient go to uh, muscle weakness because of this tandlopathy. How do you manage that? Mm. Um, uh, manage the opposite. opposite of. Oh, How sorry. do you manage can, hyperkalemia? That is a management. Management okay. and along with that carbohydrate food also. Okay. Carbohydrate in, instead of car giving carbohydrate, Diet, you Glucose, give dextrose. Dextrose, okay. we can use. dextrose, insulin. Like what? How do you treat normal hyperkalemia? Mm -hmm. That is a treatment. Mm -hmm. Only thing uh, after some time, transcellular shift Shifts. can happen. Patient can if you treat mo too much, then the patient may go to uh, hypokalemic okay. state. Yes. There is the only difference between normal hyper hyperkalemia management. And this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened to this patient afterwards? Uh, this patient uh, later the potassium levels came normal. We have stopped the correction, observed the patient for 24 hours. Okay. Potassium remains normal. We advise to uh, decrease carbohydrate rich food and avoid sternus exercise, uh, adequate dehydration okay. and lime juice also. So what are the uh, ECG changes for hypokalemia? Hypokalemic changes can be ST segment depression, sagging of uh, prolonged QT interval, uh, flattening of uh, T wave and appearance of U waves. 
ിയ <laughs> 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 Uh, no sir this there is no you point in giving atropine that type of bradycardia mm-hmm. but if you see acls protocol generally when you see bradycardia atropine is the first line treatment but this is one condition where even if you give atropine it will transiently it may increase the uh, rhythm but normally it will not affect, eff- will not be effective how do you uh, what are the other changes in uh, hyperkalemia ecg uh, tall t waves okay. can be seen sir Where all you see, see the tall T waves other than hyperkalemia? Tall T waves uh, in hyperkalemia and other conditions, it is totally different. Uh, uh, Stereoational. Hyperacute MI, then? Diversion. Stereoational with uh, coughing of ST depression. In tall T waves alone. Tall T waves alone. One is hyperacute MI. Other conditions? It's a normal pattern. Many patients you can see very tall T waves. So how do you differentiate hyperacute MI and hyperkalemic tall T waves? Hyperkalemia, all leads will be there. Universal change, all leads you can see. Hyperacute MI only selected leads. Then after that other changes of hyperkalemia. Tall T waves, flattening of P waves, widening of QRS, S wave, sinus pattern. Sinus pattern? Sine wave pattern, sine wave. Okay, then finally the patient will go to ventricular fibrillation and... uh flat waves okay anything else you want to add okay thank you thanks